no nonsense know how here and it's just about winter I'm in the process of winterizing this Lance 835 truck camper so I wanted to make a brief overview video showing you the steps that I take and so that way anybody I sell this to in the future I can give them this video or who knows maybe I'll even reference to it one day as well it's getting dark so I'll try to jump right to it should be similar for most truck campers and other campers as well uh, first thing I'll tell you is you don't want to leave it sitting on the jacks when you're not using it. So you don't want to leave it sitting on these jacks all winter. You definitely want to lower it down on something. Now, as you can see, plastic drums don't really do the job. I did this temporarily the other day and then I left the blocks there. Um, so there's a little tension on the blocks and some tension on those too until I get my proper stand set up. And also you might notice I got, um, I'm hoping I get my carport in time for before full winter sets in, but that's gonna be a nice carport going over that. Uh, check out the channel later if you wanna see how I did this. I, I just did like eight inches of stone under each one of these blocks. They're all laser leveled. Similar to how I did this carport over here, but that's not what this video is about. All right, so you've got your camper supported. The next step is gonna be getting the water out so we don't have a freeze. So make sure you've emptied your black and gray water. You can see my cap is off and I had this open, both valves open, so that's drained out. But then come over to this side and open this. This is one of your low port drains. So every camper is gonna have uh, low drains on it somewhere and this is the lowest point of the water tank, usually. So yours might be in a, a different spot. If your tank's not already empty like mine is, then you'll wanna go turn your pump on, turn the sink, get all the water out, and check your meters, make sure that's empty. Now come over to the hot water heater and you twist this, open her up. And I've already done this, so I don't even have this plug tight, but uh, you unthread this plug. Now, before you do so, make sure your water heater is not hot and that's, you know, so you don't burn yourself. So if it is hot, you can always uh, turn the burner off, of course, first, or the electric element. Make sure that electric element is off inside. And then you could run the cold water for long, or I'm sorry, run the hot water until it gets cold. So since that's already been done, you can thread this plug out. And then your, this has an eight gallon hot water tank, so that'll drain the stainless steel tank out. All right, now, as you might have guessed, I'm gonna be using the blowout method. So I've hooked up my compressed air to this. If you don't have an air compressor, I'll plug a link to one down in the description. You can get yourself a cheap little air compressor. It doesn't need to be a giant compressor. One thing you do need to know, you need to have a regulator. So I have this hooked in line with a regulator and it's at 30 PSI, because you don't wanna be putting 120 PSI into the city water outlet on this. So now that I have that hooked up, it's at 30 PSI, I can open this valve and close that side. This is just a little jig I have made up for like other things I might winterize too. And uh, open this up, I should see water come out of the, air come out of the hot water uh, there. Boom, there we go. So we're blowing out that, the rest of the residual in the hot water tank. Let that go for a minute until it's all out. All right, so that's mostly blown out. You can throw Teflon tape on this and thread this back in. I'm gonna just put it in temporarily since I might revisit that and blow it out one more time. But with that threaded in, now pressurize your system. So that's gonna pressurize the whole uh, system, the water system in the camper. Let's go inside. Once you hear it's built up full pressure, you can come into your bathroom and start by blowing out these lines. Well, all right, and turn your shower head off first though, or put the shower head into the sink, better yet. So go ahead and we can blow that all the way out. You'll run that until all air comes out. Shut her off, hit the hot water. Boom, that's blowing all the water out of those lines now. Okay, looks good. When you're done blowing each one, make sure to shut it off and then let the system build pressure back up. Now move on to the toilet and give her a good flush. Make sure only air comes out. Looks good. Moving over to the kitchen sink. I'll hit my hot water on. Okay, not very much came out of that. I actually already hit that before, so that's probably why, but same thing on the cold. A little bit came out, okay. Great, let's move on to the outside shower. And then same thing, do your hot and cold on that. Open this valve up and let that dangle and open both these. All right, so all our water's blown out. I'm gonna shut the air pressure off going to this. However, 
your tank is still pressurized, the hot water tank. So I'm gonna go turn this hot water on to help alleviate that. And then I can safely remove that plug one more time and blow that out again. And back inside, got a light on now. Sorry, it's so dark. Uh, you are gonna to wanna to get some RV antifreeze and pour that into the drains to prevent your uh, P-traps from cracking and freezing. So I'm gonna say about, we'll go, I'm gonna go a little overkill on it. Go about that much, okay. It's probably a little bit more than I need, but whatever, stuff's cheap. Same thing on that side. Might even just have one P-trap, but uh, go into your bathroom. Now, even though there's no water in the toilet, we're still gonna pour some in there just because we wanna keep that seal lubricated on the bottom. Keep it from drying out, so about yay much. And then same thing in your bathroom sink. Pour some in there. Again, a lot more than I need, more than likely, but uh, that will obviously prevent your P-trap, which is located right there. You wanna get that full of RV antifreeze. So yeah, a little bit more is not gonna hurt anything. I almost forgot the shower drain too. Make sure to pour it down there. And you know what? I'm gonna pour a little bit more just because I know that's going into the, well, it's actually dripping out on the ground too, but there you go. Let that fill in. Let's see if it's coming out on the outside. And it is, it's definitely got a pink tint to it. So that's gonna be good. Now that all the hot water pressure has been relieved, I'm gonna pull this plug one more time and just hit this air valve to see if anything shoots out of there. Nothing came out with that. Let's see. Nothing. Ah, a little bit. So I'll probably let that run for just a second just to blow the rest of all that out. Okay, we can come over to this valve and shut that. Hey, as I'm going to put this plug back in, I thought to myself, what a great idea if you just put a little hose lead coming off here and had a ball valve on it. So A, it didn't dump water all over this, but then you didn't have to deal with this plug either. I think that'd be a good upgrade if you have a camper that you're keeping. Make sure to shut off the battery switch and, or disconnect the battery if you don't have a battery shut off. And then, you know, put a trickle charger on that battery too if you want it to stay good. And also come over to your propane and make sure both your valves are shut off. Would be terrible to have a full tank seep out over long-term storage. And I'm gonna call that winterized. You'll of course wanna go back into your sink and wipe up all that pink RV antifreeze. But just to show you, an alternative method to the blowout would be using the RV antifreeze. And this actually has a uh, flush kit installed. So what you do, this is normal flow here. You would turn this to winterize. And so instead of pulling water from the water tank, it's now gonna pull water from, from this hose, which leads over to this. And then you just drop this in a bucket of RV antifreeze and then run all your faucets. And well, that's gonna get your P-traps full and get your lines full of RV antifreeze. But I don't really like to do that because I don't want to leave this stuff in the lines. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, you can see it was kind of pointless to pour water in both of those sinks because they only go to one P-trap anyway, but that's okay. Flip this back to normal. The only real benefit I can think of with using this winterized valve and getting RV antifreeze in there is your pump, you know, it'd probably be good to get some antifreeze up in this pump, but you figure if it's blown dry, I mean, should be okay, right? Heck, even if it did fail, it's a very easy thing to replace. So I'll see next year if it uh, ends up breaking. I'll let you know in the comments. It's nice, this thing actually has a hot water bypass valve too. So if I wanted to hook this up to the hose and not have to think about uh, re-winterizing the tank and draining this tank again, you could just put this, uh, bypass it. And then when you hook up to city water, it's not gonna fill your hot water tank up is pretty sweet assume that's a factory factory thing to have a couple weeks later i have a few additions i'd like to mention one you can see i did pick up one of these solar panel kits i'll show you the charger side to that but you can get them on amazon for around 100 bucks or so maybe 150 ended up using just uh, steel drums under here with the board going across that works for now has no weight on these but still in case those were to sink or fail i had that just you know, half inch away from the block so in case it blows off of the, the drums no problem and here's a little peek at the wanderer charge controller this is by renagi or renagi whatever it's called 
Uh, so that works well, and I wanted to have that anyway for when I'm on a long-distance trip. That way I have some kind of solar charging capabilities. That's 100 watts. But you can see I'm actually leaving this plugged in to my power outlet anyway, since I have uh, power right over in the carport here. And so since I'm leaving her plugged in the shore power, I'd like to go over the last item and possibly the most important in my opinion. 54% humidity right now. You might have noticed in the previous clips it was actually up at 80%. And if you don't put some kind of dehumidifier in your camper, the humidity tends to really build up in here. And then you're going to get mold and mildew growing kind of all over the place, it seems like. I've seen it in a lot of different campers. So I went on Amazon and picked up one of these. This is the VAC Plus. It's a very small, compact dehumidifier, but it does have a compressor. I've tried one of those little RV ones that they plug in. They have like a little element and not a compressor. They just don't pull enough water. So this one is programmable. You can set it to what percentage you want. And it has a built-in tank, or you can actually run the hose off. And then I drilled a hole in the, the side access door there. It's easy enough to replace if I ever have to. Uh, so that keeps the humidity down in here, and that works great for if you're plugged in the shore power. The other benefit to having a dehumidifier is if you do somehow get a leak in here, uh, say it's dripping on the bed, it's going to continually dry out. So if you don't get to it right away, at least it's, it's going to hopefully reduce the water damage that could happen. At 50% humidity, mold is generally not a problem. At 80%, it's going to thrive, and mold is always in the air everywhere, especially around where I live. Speaking of water leaks, before you put your camper away for the winter, you will definitely want to get up on the roof and check the condition of all the seams and caulking, reseal them if they look rough, and also after all the leaves have fallen, make sure to blow those off because otherwise they're going to get built up and prevent proper draining, stain your roof, clog up the gutters, all that kind of stuff. Putting a cover or tarp over top would be the best thing you could do, or a carport in my case. Hopefully that comes soon. Uh, but if you don't have any of that, just make sure to at least pay some attention to what's going on up on the roof. If you made it this far, I think you now have a good idea of what winterizing your RV is all about. Hopefully this has at least given you enough information to choose whether you want to blow the lines out or get RV antifreeze in there. So make sure to drop me any comments down below with any questions or feedback. I really appreciate that. Consider dropping it a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel and maybe checking out one of my other videos all that stuff is hugely uh, appreciated, greatly appreciated. So till next time, this is Chris Brown here. No nonsense though, Hal. And I do hope I see you again. See you next time. <laughs>